himself. Not that, would you just stop that? 2022. That's your res resolution. Deliverance. Amen. We've all needed to be delivered from something. Amen. So you just going to get delivered. God will deliver you in 20 and 22. See how I did that? <laughs> it's so funny. Will sent me a whole list of cliches. That's his, that's his first of the year ritual. He sits up and thinks of all the rhymes for 2022. Some of them, uh, they, just, they just be hilarious. <laughs> I got one for you today, though. Look at somebody and say, what, will God, uh, what God will do. Come on, look at him and say, what God will do in 20 and 22. <laughs> what God will do. Well, pastor, how do you know what God is going to do in 2022? Because his word tells me what he's going to do. He's already, look at somebody say, he's already said. And if you read his word, you know what he was going to do. Because he's already said what he's going to do. Sometimes we don't need a revelation and a, oh, what are you seeing, brother? And I can't tell you all the emails I get now. Oh, what are you seeing? Because of the social distancing message I did, now they think I'm, you know, a, a, a prophet. Because you predicted that the, the, it was going to be a mandate and all that stuff. So, brother, what are, you, ooh, what are you seeing in 2022? I see what God will do in 2022. That's what, I, that's what I'm worried about. I can't be worried about what the world is going to do because the world is going to keep doing evil. Men's hearts are evil. Men are void of truth. But I know what God is going to do. Look at somebody and say, what God will do. Add this to it. What God will do for you. In 2022. I might bust a rhyme if I keep going. On them drums. Give me a beat. <laughs> I don't need to do that, do I, Deacon? No. Not a beat from the drums. AdamandBeliever.com forward slash 2022.pdf. When you have it, say amen. amen. I told you this is going to be quick. Oh, and thank God for the wonderful recording we had the other day. Did God not move in this place? I got so many messages from people saying that they were just in tears at certain points of that recording because they just felt the presence of God. When you glorify God, he will come in. He's waiting on us to call on him from a pure heart. So thank God, PJ and the band and all of the wonderful praise singers. Thank y'all so much for that sacrifice. Many of them was struggling under the weather. Boy, we had all kind of stuff up here. They were taking and spraying and shooting in their throat and everything to try to make that record. But they did an awesome job. Amen. I'm so proud of this music here. Thank God for them. Amen. Thank God Sister Carmina did a great job emceeing. You know she's world renowned though, so she, we don't expect anything different. When, when everybody know you, then they know you for something. So, amen. But we thank God for that. Amen. Adamandbeliever.com forward slash 2022. Look at somebody and say what God will do in 2022. I just like saying it. The first thing God is going to do is he will provide for us. He's Jehovah Jireh, which means the Lord will provide. How many of you have he provided for? Faithfully. Faithfully provides for us. So he, this year is not going to be any different. As a matter of fact, he's going to put a little something extra on it this year. From what I'm getting from the Holy Ghost. He's going to provide. Because he wants the time when they start doubting him, stop believing in him, start talking against him. That's the time he likes. 
because that's the time when he's going to do what God does and what only God can do. All he needs is for you to trust him. And we don't get hype about money and money coming and all that stuff. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about him having provision for us. That means you're safe. You can't nobody take your provision away if God gave it to you. So you don't have to fear. In 2022, God will provide for us. God has promised us that he is our provision. We will have everything we need in him. Everything we need in him. Now that don't include everything you want. That's why you got to run your wants by the Holy Ghost. You don't just want for things you ask the holy spirit why do i want for that thank you pierre i needed that need a little encouragement it's the first of the year don't y'all look at me crazy but you need to ask god why do i want that to heap up on my lust to look good in front of some uh, in front of somebody to make the haters hate Yeah, why do you want it? So you run your wants by God. But he said he would take care of your needs. Yeah. Amen. Some of us are so 20 and 20 eyes that we don't know the difference between wants and needs. You don't need Jordans. You want those. Ain't nothing wrong with wanting them if you want them and can, can afford them. But you don't pray for them. Oh, Lord, touch Michael. Just touch Michael's heart. Michael's heart. God. Save him, Lord. Don't try to go that route to get the shoes. Save him, his heart. Make sure, oh, Father God, speak to him. Because I want to make sure that I represent him when you bless me with them tens. In the name of, oh, mm, but bless Michael, his wife, his children, the hornets, and all, Father God, I just bless him. <laughs> Somebody is doing that. Yeah, like God goes, man, since you prayed for MJ, I'm going to give you some J's. Oh, since you interceded for him, God is not going to do that. So you don't pray for shoes. I don't care how many people you see wearing them, you don't pray for them. Amen. There's some other things you should be praying for, I promise. Amen. So, God has promised that he would provide for us and we will have everything we need in him. Amen. Ain't nobody under God's authority going hungry. Nobody's gonna go gonna go thirsty. You can save up all the water you want to. Amen. But when they want to take the water, they'll take the water. And only God is gonna have to find a way. He told Moses, strike the rock. And water came out of a rock for them to drink. Is that not the word? So God is a provider. You're going to have food and water. Now, you might not get to rock the Ralph Lauren shirt. Amen. Your man might have a tennis racket in his hand. And that's all right. Amen. Wear what you got to wear. And you know, clothes don't matter anymore. They, they don't matter. If folk wear whatever now. Whatever. Everything's cool now. He'll just say, ask me. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> Amen. I would wear the same thing every day if I knew my family wouldn't get on me. <laughs> I would wear the same. I think I might almost do that during the week. <laughs> Wife got to get stuff and just throw it in the washroom and say, boy, I'm washing this. These clothes walk to the washroom by themselves. <laughs> he wore it so much. 
Man, you know, you just get a certain age. It's just that stuff just, man, please. Don't matter. Oh, but I see you. You be fresh on Sunday. That's the only day. During the week, I wear the same pair of shoes every day. Man. Because it don't matter, Elder. Nobody care. And who's sitting up looking and clocking and taking notes? And I, they don't be in here doing that. What we wearing and what we look like, if that's bothering you, you're in the wrong church. You need to go to a church where the pastor ride a camel to church or something. You can't handle what I'm driving. <laughs> I'm serious. Y'all let the wrong stuff bother you. Philippians 4.19. <laughs> And no offense, you know, these messages go all over the world. So no offense to the pastor that really do ride the camel. I mean, no offense, our followers in Saudi Arabia and, and Ethiopia, followers in the Sudan and all these wonderful places where they follow us. I, I, no offense, it would just look a little strange in America for, the, for you to pull up on a live animal. No matter what it is, <laughs> just look a little different. It would be a little different for that to be in your parking space. Just waiting for service to be over. folk names and had you couldn't have lived in his day you'd have rebuked him why you call him a fox oh no that's not right what would she i mean what would you do you stupid <laughs> okay let me move on Let's start this over again. God has promised us that he is our provision. So Philippians 4 19. But my God shall supply how many of your needs? All. How much is all? all? God shall supply all your need according to how much money you have. According to what kind of job you have. According to how prestigious you are. How much you've moved up in the company. According to how broke you are. No. It's according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. How many of you know God owns everything? You know why he owns everything? Because he made everything. And whenever he wants somebody to have something, he knows how to give it to them. He pull, I mean, the disciples pulled a fish out of the water with money in his mouth. So according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, the more we love and trust in him, the less our possessions and accomplishments mean to us. Yeah. yeah. How people come to me, brother, see, you know, I mean, you know, we just, man, me and my wife, we just came, you know, everybody just kind of flossing and stuff. And, you know, we, we just kind of humble, so we can't really just rock it like that. I said, brother, if you thinking about that, then you ain't loving and trusting in God enough. Because the more you trust in God, 
you don't even see and worry about that kind of stuff. That stuff is not important. What you rocking and the flavor of the week and what you... They tell P31 what colors they were and whatever, and my wife will go right over to half off half and get it. That's half off what was already half, if you don't understand the name. It was already half. And then half off half. In a heartbeat, now it may have a bullet hole in it. It may be torn raggedy when it tore the little, the little security thing off of it. You can sew that right up, tuck that in. Look, somebody, you can make that just, I tried to do that. That's, that, that's a part of it. Brother, you got a lot of strings hanging there. Yes! You don't know? <laughs> yeah, so it ain't, no, it ain't even about that. And if you think like that you're not loving and trusting God enough because that's what we in here for we're in here to love and trust God so our eyes on on that kind of stuff we ain't focusing on that it's not about our possessions and accomplishments and the closer you get to God the less that stuff matters that's why the disciples were able to walk away from everything just to be with Jesus Psalms 119 and 36, this is powerful. Incline my heart unto thy testimonies and not to covetousness. What is he saying here? Incline my heart unto whose testimonies? Thy, God, unto your testimonies. What you can do. What you have done. Because if I study what you have done and I fall in love with your capabilities, then I won't be coveting. If we truly believe that it, it was God, if we truly believe that it was God that gave to us, then we won't worry about losing things on his watch. Think about who gave it to you. Isn't that the job you prayed for? Isn't that the job that you weren't even qualified for? Isn't that the job that God gave you? Why are you worried about losing that job and God gave it to you? You don't think he can do that again? Job 1 and 21 and, and said, naked came I out of my mother's womb and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be what? The name of the Lord. If he is God, he has the right to give and take away. If he's blessed us with it, why do we worry about it? You said, look somebody say you said. You said God blessed you. So if God is the one that blessed you, what are you worried about? Amen? Amen. The second thing, God, we know what God is going to do in 2022. He's going to protect us. Look at somebody and say, God's going to protect me. He will protect us in 2022. He's Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our... Y'all believe God still heals? Oh, all week long. I've been getting testimonies. Pray for, you know, because once I put the message out last week, folks, just pray for this, pray for that, pray for me, pray for me, and I pray for him, pray for him. Next thing, he's 100% healed. He just got up. Brain tumor's gone. Baby's still alive. Oh, just all week. Because he's going to protect us. God has given us his power to be healed, delivered, and set free. Has he healed anybody in here before? Amen. We did that song, uh, In the Name of Jesus, In the Name, uh, Friday night. And the power of God came in here, and I know why. Because I wrote that song when I was sick, and I thought I was going to die. And that was recent. I wrote that song like three years ago. 
when I had the, the mold contamination and couldn't preach. Y'all remember that? And I wrote that song and we sung that song and that's when we started finding out what was going on after we sung that song because I just believed. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name. And I said, man, I'm going to write a song that testifies of the healing that I need in my body. Amen. And so I got to the piano. And I, <laughs> but I did. I just, you know, I, I wrote that because I wanted to be healed. And I believe God healed me. Not only did he heal me, but he showed me what was wrong. That's what I love about him. Yeah, a lot of folks aren't getting healed because they don't want to deal with what's wrong. No, oh, you can't get no hand clap on that part. Yeah, you carrying stuff, you doing stuff, you, you, you saying, whatever it is, you got to deal with that if you want complete healing. Yeah, that's why the prayer lines have gotten shorter and shorter. And, the, you know, it used to be folks would come to church and believe they could be healed. Now folks come to church to find out which doctor to go to. Or the churches is in cahoots with the pharmaceutical industry. Taking money under the table to push pharmaceuticals. Yeah. Why? Because folks aren't dealing with what's wrong. What are you carrying, brother? What are you doing? What lifestyle are you living? What you practicing? You got to bring all of that before the Lord if you want healing. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. That's when you begin to see the power of God when you're ready to deal with yourself. God has given us his power to be healed, delivered, and set free from the wiles of the devil. As long as we have faith, we will be protected. Amen? Amen. Faith, not fear. That's why we come in here. We come in here with faith. Every time you walk in here without a mask, every time you walk in here and don't social distance, every time you walk in here and hug up everybody during the ABC song, you're doing that in faith. You are doing that in faith. Believing that you're protected. Church is closed today. Bunch of them. Asking me, hey, y'all gonna go ahead and have service? Go ahead and have service? How do you go ahead and have service? Well, we closing, brother, because we got outbreaks. We got outbreaks of what? There's folk sick, folk outbreaks. Amari Kron? You canceling service because of Amari crime? What is it called? Omicron. I, I didn't poke fun at it so much. I, didn't, I don't even remember the real name. I put a picture on Instagram today of a ceiling fan blade with Amarion standing on it. James Lomax made that. Thank you. Thank you, James. You went viral today. You didn't know it. <laughs> But yeah, you canceling service because of Amari, Omicron? Omicron that has the exact same symptoms as a common cold. Sneezing. Coughing. Body aches. Fever. Headaches. That's been happening to me all my life. Around the time when I eat a whole cake and a lot of dressing. Mac and cheese. I stopped eating it. Now, my sister makes the best there is, but I don't eat it no more. I'm like, Tanya, you gonna hurt us. They, they still eat it. They don't. Yams. Yams supposed to be healthy. They ain't healthy after you finish Willy Wonka and them up. Come with me. You will see the land of pure imagination. I need the balloons up here. Y'all move the balloons. I couldn't do my Willie Walker. Yeah, that's your yams. Your yams. 
got everlasting gobstoppers in them. <laughs> you got all the candy in your yams. <laughs> there ain't nothing healthy about them no more. You transform them. You transform their purpose. You change their purpose. <laughs> when you finished, <laughs> you roasted marshmallows over the fire and then put those on it. Then change the name, Candy Yams. <laughs> if you want to view paradise, <laughs> take a look around. <laughs> ah, yeah, that ain't no Abby Crud. That's not Abby Crud. You, what did you eat? But as long as we have faith, we're protected. James 5 and 15 says, and the prayer of faith shall do what? Save, save the what? Save. The Bible said that the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, what? Okay, wait, wait, stop, stop. All of this is together in the same passage. Wonder why it's together in the same passage. Because it's all related. The prayer of faith is going to save the sick and the Lord's going to raise him up. And if you have committed sins, they shall be forgiven. Oh, so you mean sickness can correlate with sins? Gluttony is a sin. Amen. Ooh, it's tight, but it's what? Right. It's right. Yeah. So a lot of times we sit because of stuff we doing that we shouldn't be doing. And all you got to do is stop doing it. Amen. Amen. That's the beauty. God will forgive you every time. That's the beauty and the power of what Jesus did for us. The spirit of fear has been unleashed in our world. And people are making life-altering decisions out of fear instead of resting in God's protection. I question, do some of these folk know God? Because I'm resting in his protection. Amen? I'm not tinkering around with my timeline. If it's time for me to go, I'm going to go. But I know that's God's decision and not Omicron's. That's God's decision and not coronavirus. That's God's decision and not a ventilator's. That's God's decision. So I'm resting in his protection. First John 4 and 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love does what? That's why I'm not afraid because I have God's perfect love. Because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. God is our defense. He is our shield. We just sung that this morning. He is our refuge. Listen to this. We only live for him to die and be with him forever. That's the only reason you live in anyway. To die in him. So why are you afraid of death? So we must rely on his protection to keep us safe in this hour. Yeah. Psalms 91 and 4. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thy trust. His truth ooh, shall what? Be thy shield and buckler. Let me tell you the reason why folks are afraid is because truth wasn't preached in their churches. Yeah. That's the beginning of it. They went, truth wasn't preached. They didn't want the truth behind hip-hop in their churches. Definitely don't want the truth behind the creation roles and all of that. They don't want the truth. So when stuff like this jump off, they get scared. They have no shield because truth is the shield. See, most of us in here, most of us, as sleepers always, but most of us in here aren't afraid of what's happening because truth is the foundation of this church. We've been standing on truth since the beginning. 
We've been standing on what God said since the beginning. So when stuff start happening, we just like, you know, I'm a trusting God. Can I keep going? Finally, the third thing that God is going to do, he will be our priest in 20 and 22. Now, I use what I normally say about the heroes, provider, protector, and priest. That's what a hero is in the earth. That's what a man is supposed to be. Those three things. You're supposed to be a provider, a protector, and a priest of your house. Amen. I know folks have problems with the hero's message. And most of the time, it's because Jezebel don't like any of those things I just named. The Bible said Jezebel killed so many priests that Elijah had to hide them in a cave. Why was she killing the priests? Because that's what made them men. That's their call. That's who they were. So Jezebel has a problem with all three. She don't want a man to be the provider. She don't want him to be the protector. She definitely don't want him to be the priest. But we got to tell Jezebel, in 20 and 22, we ain't thinking about you. <laughs> Man, we've been fighting Jezebel since we started this church. And we're going to keep on fighting her. Because I don't want her in here. Oh, and folks, don't get upset when folks manifest and leave. And oh, we gone. I'm taking my family. Oh, don't you understand that that is the Lord? Because he knows something that we don't know. And he's protecting us from something in the future. Get on out of here. I got five minutes of sorrow for you. And I got to move on. Because we got a work to do. Amen. Look at somebody and say, we got work to do. Amen. So don't be thinking, oh, I'm going to be missed. I'm going to make sure I'm missed. <laughs> Bro, you get five minutes. Yes, sir. But in 2022, he will be our what? Priest. Our priest. God is going to be our priest. Man, I'm preaching in here. And it's going quick, too. Look at that. Woo, I'm doing good. The high priest was responsible for atonement for the sins of the people. That's what he was elected for in the Bible. He would risk his own life to go into the holy place. To sprinkle blood for the sins of God's people. Risk his whole life because if he had any blemish, anything was wrong with him, he might not be coming back. Yes, sir. Amen. That's what preachers have to do now. We have to risk our life to preach to people. Because if people find anything wrong with you, any blemish, if you ain't perfect, they're going to try to destroy you. Yeah. Leviticus 1 and 5. And he shall kill the bullock before the Lord and the priest, Aaron's son, shall bring the blood and sprinkle the blood round about upon the altar that is by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. I don't have time to read all of it, but this was a process that required the high priest to atone. And at that time, they had to use the, the blood of animals uh, to do it. But then Jesus, look, somebody said Jesus came. Jesus. Jesus came and shed his blood. Jesus is the sacrifice for our sins. Death has to pay for the life of sin. So when you have sin in your life, death has to pay. So Jesus became the perfect sacrifice for all of our sins. Sins, sins we've committed, sins we ain't committed yet. I would have clapped at that. He has forgiven us. And he wants us to walk in this forgiveness by forgiving others. You know, you can't walk in the forgiveness of God if you don't forgive others. Oh, that's, see, that's the problem. That's the problem. Yeah, that's why you have problems with leadership. That's why you don't want to follow nobody. That's why you can't submit to anyone's authority. Because you haven't forgiven your authority. If you got art against your father, you're going to have art against me. If you haven't forgiven your daddy, you're not going to forgive me. Yeah. Yeah. You, that's the only way you can feel justified in how you feel about him. You're not going to forgive your boss. 
You know how many jobs you've walked off of? Because you can't forgive your boss. He don't owe you nothing but your check. You get mad. Oh, I'm tired of this place. I'm talking, no, you ain't tired of that place. You tired of your father. You have an issue. And it's manifested in every avenue of your life. Making you unstable in all your ways. Oh, I know I'm preaching in here. Yeah, that's your problem. Don't you be blaming that on me. I'm not your problem, brother. I'm not why you're mad. I ain't done nothing to you. You can't be that mad at me and I ain't done nothing to you. I know why you're upset. Yeah, but Jesus died for everything, but the forgiveness don't work if you don't forgive. Yeah, so you can't plant yourself in a church like this that preaches constant forgiving and letting the past go. You can't be in here if you won't do it. But he has forgiven us and he wants us to walk in this forgiveness by forgiving others and trusting that we are made new by him. You can't trust that you've been made new if you don't believe other folks have been made new. Your father doesn't apologize to you. If you can't forgive him and believe that he's been made new. Then you haven't been made new. I will preach in here. On the first of the year. Man, I'm just rhyming like Jay Bryan up in here. Man. Hope y'all recording. <laughs> Hebrews 10 and 18. Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. So understand because Jesus has become the perfect sacrifice. But if we don't forgive... It doesn't work for us. He forgives us and expects, not expects, commands that we forgive. Look at somebody and say, you better let it go. You better let it go, man. You better let it go. We don't even want to talk about your list. That's what I don't understand. You can't let nothing go and look what you have done. <laughs> Boy, folks are something else, ain't they? As long as we forgive others, we will be forgiven. We are tormented by our past sins because we hold on to the past sins of others. Mm -hmm. God wants us to let go of our past by first letting go of the sins of others that traumatized or harmed us. Mm, yeah, the claps. Yep, you got to forgive them. You got to let them go. Matthew 6 and 15. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father do what? Summary! I got this beautiful rainbow up here. And this ain't LGBT. This is God's rainbow. God made the rainbow and it is beautiful. And it don't have nothing to do with homosexuality. Boy, almost started the year off wrong. My goodness. Mm. Let me drink some water. That was close. <laughs> that was real close that's God's rainbow amen it's beautiful twenty twenty two is going to be a year of endurance endurance can you endure are you gonna make it can you endure I love all y'all Love your faces, love to see you. I like walking through, speaking to everybody, but everybody's not gonna make it. You're just not. We must be poised to endure temptation, trials, and testing from the New World Order. They are coming hard after godly morality this year. 
These are things God has shown me. But they're coming hard after the godly morality. They want to cancel godly morality. They are going to try to indoctrinate our children, lull believers to sleep, and close the doors of our churches permanently. Those that, will st those that stand will be vindicated by God. That means God's going to stand with us. But those that fold are going to be the Willy Wonka abased, kicked to the curb. The mask, the fear, and the distancing in churches was just the beginning. The devil's plan is to rob every church of faith and cause them to cower to the point of being online only. If he can destroy the fellowship, he can hinder the strength of God's earthly representation. Look at somebody and say, we must keep standing. We must keep standing. We must keep standing. We must stand on God's promises. He gave us stuff to stand on. What he promised to do, he will do. He just wants a group that will move in faith and not fear. A people that will remember all of his wonderful acts and expect him to do great things this year. If you can expect it and believe it, guess what? It will happen. God's power is still here and he longs to show just how powerful he is through us. Make 2022 the year you seek him like never before and allow him to be your provider, protector, and priest in this final hour. Let God arise and what? <laughs> Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Believe on him and trust his promises. Amen. Got one scripture, but it says a lot. 2 Corinthians 1 and 20. For all, how much is all? All is all of it. For all the promises of God in him are what? Yea, Yea and in him what? Yea. Amen. You know what that means? That means it's guaranteed. And when it comes to God, because he's a multidimensional being with no beginning and end, this means that it's already happened. We're just waiting to get to that point. It can't be changed. It can't be reversed because it's already been spoken. It has to happen. We're just waiting to get to it. For all the promises of God in him are yea. And in him, amen. Unto the glory of God by us. Everyone stand to your feet. Praise God for his word. Hallelujah. I'm going to stand this year. I'm standing on the promises of God this year. Standing by faith on his promises. If you're going to stand, if that's you, you're going to stand. I want you to just come up or make an effort to come up. May not be enough room up here, but just come up. We're going to pray for strong legs, planted feet to stand. It's going to get tough. It's going to get tough. But you got to endure. You made it through the toughest year many of us have ever seen. And you're still here. So we're going to keep standing. Keep standing. Keep standing. I need you. I need you to stand with me. I need you. I need you, Jeff. I need you to keep standing. You can't quit standing. I need you, Jay. You can't stop standing. Brian, elders, I need y'all to stand. Can't quit, Josh. You got to keep standing. All of you. I need you, brothers, and your wives, families, you sisters. Got to keep standing. We're at the end of this thing. Got to keep standing. Amen? Everyone just bow your heads. Father God, I pray, Lord God, 
just that this message, Father God, it will just start our year off the right way. That we would start this year off in faith. Just reminiscing on all the wonderful things you've done for us in the past and how you've kept this church, protected us, Lord, by just putting a shield over us and really, Father God, just keeping us all on one accord, God, just with a desire to stand. No matter what the devil has thrown our way, all the attacks, all the witchcraft, all the different things that have happened, Father God, we, we have still stood for you. And we're going to keep standing for you because we believe you are with us. We believe you planted this church in the earth for every believer that is here that is partaken of it. And Father, we're not taking our eyes off of what you've done. We're going to believe it, Father God. And we're not going to allow the enemy to change our minds. In 2022, God, we're going to stand. So I pray right now for strength to stand. I pray right now for endurance. I pray, Father God, for long suffering. I pray, Father God, for just all of the things we need to make this stance in this final hour. Help your people to stand, God. No matter what we're seeing with our eyes, no matter what we're hearing with our ears, Father God, help us to stay planted like that tree by the rivers of living water. Plant us, Lord, so we will be unmovable, so we can't be pushed over so we can't be shifted so we won't lose our footing so we won't lose our grounding father god keep us planted so we will stand against the wiles of the enemy and this will be another year father god that we stand strong for you and represent you well in the earth help us to stand in the name of jesus and i pray for the head of every home whether it's male or female if you head of your own home whoever father god let their homes this year be sanctuaries of your presence father god let us make our homes inviting to you let us make our lifestyles inviting to you let us please you father god in every way in every manner so you'll be pleased with us god so that this year you will get the glory complete glory from our lives in the name of jesus we pray Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Come on and give God praise.